Uh, welcome here to this uh, Hindenburg uh, demonstration. And Hindenburg is, if you don't know already, uh, a um, an audio workstation that is designed for making spoken word productions, which could be um, a podcast, could be a news segment, um, it could be anything like that. Obviously, you can add music to it, but it's not a, a music production tool. Now, the whole point of this is that now you've been spending a couple of days talking about audio, you want to actually go and produce it, and producing audio can be a bit tricky. So what we've tried to do here is make a tool that is easy to use for someone who doesn't necessarily have a audio engineering background, but at the same time has all the features that you would require to do something like audio journalism. Myself, I have a background from Danish national broadcasting as both an audio engineer and a journalist, so I kind of know both sides of the problem. And the software here we have designed uh, on the basis of that, so we understand what it is that you want to produce, and at the same time, we understand the challenges that you will have as a journalist whilst you're trying to produce it. So anyway, let's go ahead and I'll run through some of the features and let's see how far we get. So one of the, oh, I need to switch to this screen now. There we go. So one of the th first things that you will probably want to try to do is do a really uh, simple um, podcast. Basically just you talking and that might sound something like this hello everyone welcome to the biggest ideas in the universe i'm your host sean carroll today's big idea i'm pretty sure is going to be one of your favorites it's definitely one of my favorites the idea is gravity by which we mean of course general relativity einstein's theory of gravity so this is a typical podcast it will be you in front of the microphone and now let's have a look at how you actually would do that and as we go through the hour here, we'll obviously step it up so it gets slightly more complicated. But let's start with the basics. So what we want to do is be able to select a microphone. We want to be able to arm uh, a track and we want to be able to do some voice tracking. And it will look like this as soon as we get into Hindenburg. So here I have Hindenburg. This is what it looks like. We are in the workspace and over here to the left, I can choose my inputs. In this case, I'm using a microphone that is right here. I can arm the track and we can see now that I have an input on this track. So all I need to do now is just record. So here we are recording along. All works well. It's pretty easy and straightforward. If I was reading from a script, I might actually do some mistakes now and again, as you do. So what you would like to do is, uh, well, what you typically would do is just stop the recording, then do uh, another recording, and then you could edit that afterwards. But we are busy people. We can't do that all day long. So we want to just fly on, as we say. This is called a punch-in. So if I wanted to do a re-recording of this last bit here, I could just place my playhead where I want to re-record. And if I've actually set it up properly, just one sec. And now I will have a pre-roll of uh, what I just recorded once I press the button. And it will begin recording from here. So let's try to press the record button. I actually do some mistakes now and again. So it automatically rewinded, and I could hear what I just said, and it just punched in at the point of um, where I wanted to do the re-recording. As soon as I stop the recording, it will automatically set the levels. So all the levels here are now set to broadcast uh, outputs. I'll get back to that a bit later. So that's what we would do if we just wanted to do a simple recording. The next situation you'll probably be in is that you want to do a roundtable uh, podcast or show. So that basically means that you have more than one microphone. You have a couple of microphones uh, around the table and you're all talking more or less at the same time. And it could sound something like this. Jamie, why are we here? We're here because my dad's written porno. Your dad's written a porno. Erotic literature. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
previously on My Dad Wrote a Porno. Jim grunted and Belinda thought she felt something entering her pussy. <laughs> oh my God. If you have to ask. Did the man know he was only tickling her? <laughs> So this is, well, maybe not typically what a podcast like that would sound like, but at least it's three people sitting around a table and having a conversation or laugh in this case. So how will we actually go about doing that? So let's try to think we want to have multiple microphones. We want to be able to record them. We want to be able to edit them as well. And we want to be able to balance uh, the levels. We've got something called magic levels, which is quite nifty. And maybe add a little music to it. And all that might sound very daunting, but it's not. So let's go back here and see what we can do. Let's make a new session. So I always just showed you how to arm one track. So we've got me on one track here. And on this track, I can just choose a different input. So that could be any input. Let's try that one. Obviously, I'm just sitting here on my own, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense what I actually choose, but I'll just try to do it anyway. Yeah, let's try to do that. So I can now arm all the tracks, and I can, in this case, have myself on three tracks, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but let me do it anyway. So just to give you an idea, now I'm recording all three tracks. It is really that simple. So what you would really do is just start recording, record for the hour, two hours, however long it is that you want to do a recording, and then you can edit afterwards. And regarding editing, we can actually link all the tracks together. So any edits that I will do here, if I want to remove something, it will happen on all tracks at the same time. That even goes for when we do stuff like this, trimming and doing fades and that kind of. So doing multi-track uh, editing and recording is quite easy. Now, some of the issues that you will have once you are doing recordings like this is something called bleed. Now, let me just get another session here. It's basically the same thing. This is just four tracks. And bleed is a problem that occurs when you are talking into a microphone and you have more than one microphone open. So if I had, imagine me sitting in front of one microphone and there's two or three other microphones around the table, my voice will go into this microphone like this, which is fine, but then it will also travel to the other microphones. And in this case, if we imagine that this is on top here, this is me talking into my microphone, you can actually see the voice imprints on the other three microphones as well. And this is what is called bleed. And it's uh, the problem is that you get this kind of really annoying roomy kind of sound and you would really like to get rid of it. I can just try to play this back so you can hear what it sounds like. Could you please introduce yourself to our listeners? I'm Stephen Licardi. I'm a social worker, spoken word poet and performance activist. I'm Laura Nagel. I wor I'm working as the Community-Based Learning Projects Manager here at the Virginia Tech Institute for Policy and Governance. It doesn't sound horrible, but it's got a kind of a roomy sound to it that we don't really like. So what you will typically need to do is try to get rid of it. So what you could do is remove all the, the sounds underneath, like so. That would be one way of doing it. But as you might imagine this could take a very long time to do. And that will even sound a bit odd as well because you don't necessarily want to completely remove the sound underneath because that wouldn't necessarily sound natural. So what you really want to do is turn down the level of the one speaking underneath. So the way that you manipulate levels in Hindenburg is, well, as you can see, it's quite easy. You don't go into any different modes or anything like that. So this will be a way of doing it that you just go in and fiddle with all the levels. Again, something that will take a very long time, especially if you have a lot of tracks. So what we came up with was a solution for that. Let's have the computer just work it out all on its own. So now I've just selected all the tracks, go up to my tools, got my magic levels, and now it's going to do all that work for me. There you go. 
Okay, so let's try to play this back again and see if you can hear what it's doing. Yourselves to our listeners. I'm Stephen Licardi. I'm a social worker, spoken word poet, and performance activist. I'm Laura Nagel. I wor I'm working as the Community-Based Learning Projects Manager here at the Virginia Tech Institute for Policy and Governance. Today's program features Julia Dinsmore. So this takes care of a problem that is really, really typical when you are doing this kind of recording, and it does it really quickly. Oh, I forgot all about the music. So if you wanted to add some uh, music to this, um, we can do that as well. I Let me just not talk about the clipboard for one second. Let's just find some music. Okay, so I've got a little bit of music here. I'm just going to drag that in. And it's automatically going to convert this file to a WAV file. It's also going to set the levels for me because there is auto levels, as you can see, setting the levels now nicely. So all I need to really worry about is placing it. Now, the reason why everything's going a bit chunky and slowly is because of the screen sharing. It always does that and makes it look like I'm working slowly, which is not the case. So here we have it. I've put some music. Let me just play that back. Okay, so let's say we want the show to start here. So what I'm going to do now is duck the music down here. Now I want to move everything here over so it fits right there. So I can just select everything to end. Jesus, it's moving so slowly. This is usually very smooth. Okay, so here we go. Uh, all I've done now really is done the recording. I have dragged some audio in there. I've had the software automatically set the levels. And if everything goes to the way it should do, for this to go on air as a radio broadcast, it should peak around minus nine. We'll get back to what we do as a podcast podcast, but as a radio show, it should peak at minus nine when we have the narration going. And the music should be roughly about around minus 15. This is the EU standard for setting audio. I'm your host, Andy Morikawa, in the IPG studio on the campus of Virginia Tech. Stephen and Laura, would you please introduce yourselves to our listeners? I'm Stephen Licardi. I'm a social worker, spoken word poet, and performance activist. I'm Laura Nagel. I wor I'm working as the community-based learning project. So here we go. Now suddenly we've got a show that sounds quite nice, actually. Um, and it hasn't taken very long to do, and it's not that difficult. Well, I hope it's coming through that it's not that difficult to do anyway. So moving on. Having people in the studio is great, but sometimes you would actually want to dial someone up and have them in the show as well. So uh, typically in the old days, we'll just get someone on the phone. Charles Bolden oh. is a former astronaut and NASA director and told us about the strategy. As an example. During the Obama administration, we targeted Mars as the ultimate destination for humanity, but said we would spend 10 years, the decade of the 20s, in lunar orbit and then eventually down to the surface. But why would NASA start with another moon landing instead of going straight to Mars, the real target? Trying to make sure that the technologies that we need to push. You get the idea. You got someone interviewing someone on a, uh, a phone or on Zoom, FaceTime, Skype, anything like that. And how would you go about doing that? Do you need any hardware, uh, external software, anything like that? No, you don't. That said, uh, I'm just going to get back to in a second how you actually set it up. But bear in mind that any sound coming from any phone or from any audio of IP thing like Zoom or FaceTime doesn't necessarily sound great. So if you are going to do a longer interview, it's probably not the best idea to use the sound uh, from that device. So better to go out in the field and do the recording if possible or have whoever you're talking to record it locally and send it to you. Just a caution thing. Anyway, how would we do it? We want to have an input into Hindenburg, an output from something like Skype, and then just record whatever it is that we're recording. I'm just going to show you how we're going to do that. 
wonder if I'm running out of time. I hope not. So here we are again, back in Hindenburg. I'm going to arm my track once more, so this is me. And this time I want to prepare this track for something coming into something. I'm on a mic, by the way, on a Soundflower. Now doing this on a Windows machine is a lot easier. You don't need Soundflower, you can just choose uh, the communication device. But in this case, I'm going to use Soundflower as my input. If that doesn't make any sense to you whatsoever, it will in a second. So let's go over here to Skype. You can see here my audio settings in Skype. I got my microphone, that doesn't really matter. But just bear in mind, this is the microphone that whoever you're talking to on Skype will be hearing. And this is the important one, the speakers. This is the output. And I've set that to Soundflower as well. So really what I'm saying is I want Skype to play out through Soundflower and I want that to be recorded here inside Hindenburg. So if I start recording now, I can pull up. I thought I'd dial up at least. No, it's definitely not the one I want to call. Nope. Oh, shush. I just basically called everyone at the office. It was not what I intended to do. No, it was the test call I wanted to do. Yes, Skype, you are asleep. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. So as you can see here, I am recording myself on one track and I have Skype on the other track. And that is just the way that I want it because I want everything divided. So I, if I don't want to use myself uh, from the interview afterwards, I can always remove that track. So here you go. This is me up here on this track and the interview down here. If I don't want to use my own questions, I can just easily remove that track and all I have left is the interview. Hello, welcome to Skype testing service. And there you have it. So that's how you do um, phone interviews. And you can do exactly the same thing with Zoom or Google Hangouts or whatever it is that you're using. Now, in this situation, I want to do a slightly different kind of show. This is a, um, a produced show. So it's not going out live. It's not similar live where we just have people talking and just kind of tidy it up. Now, this is actually something that I'm going to be producing maybe from a script or something like that. It could sound something like this. The Bank of England has been very heavily involved in the response to the, the Leave vote. Let's hear a clip now from Mark Carney, the bank governor, just after the Leave vote was officially announced. We've taken all the necessary steps to prepare for today's events. And in the future, we will not hesitate to take any additional measures required to meet our responsibilities as the United Kingdom moves forward. Thank you very much. Any additional measures required? What will those measures be? What, what has the Bank of England been doing and, and what can we expect it to do? One, it's likely that they're going to uh, cut interest rates. Uh, they're already very low, but they can probably cut a little bit. And you've probably heard this kind of segment a million times when they've really thought about how they do it. So let me just show you how they actually do it. You've probably been into the field and done an interview which is great. I could do a longer talk on just how you actually do that, but that will be for some other time. Then you'll need to start uh, finding the, the good sound bites that you actually want from that interview. That will be the editing part of it. Then we want to add it to a clipboard. Now, this is a feature that is quite unique for Hindenburg. This is a place where you can place all your great sound bites so you can actually figure out where to find them. And at the end, we want to do a little bit of montaging. Okay, going back to Hindenburg. Now, let's assume for a second that um, we have an interview. I'm just going to find an interview. There you go. Pull that in. Again, it's automatically decoding it. So it's now a WAV file, so we can actually edit it and it's all done so what i would do if i've been in the field and i've done an interview i would then sit and listen to it and 
find the sound parts. So I'll probably hold the mic about right here. We're okay. Yeah, that's okay. cool. Just uh, your name. Yeah, my name is Simon. Simon Ackermans. Okay, so I want that bit. My name is Simon. Yeah, my name is Simon. So if you have been using other audio uh, systems, you know this is probably what you'll be doing. My name is Simon, Simon Ackermans from Utrecht. You would find the soundbar like that, and then you would put that to a scratch track. You can do that here if you like, but the problem with that is if you have a lot of small clips, and they're all lying around here, within five minutes you have absolutely no idea what is going on in each clip. So this is where the clipboard comes into play. Over here to the right, you have a clipboard. Right now there's nothing in it. It just has some odd names. So I'm just gonna take this clip here and add it to the one called int. It'll just be short for interview. We could call that something else if we like. In this case, it's my interview with Simon. And he said something down the lines of- My name is Simon. My name is Simon. Right, so now I can always find that. I can play it back from here, and if I want to use it in my uh, edit again, I can just drag it out into the workspace, and there it is. And it's actually still here, so I can use it num numerous times if I like. If I continue this way, we would end up with something that looked somewhat like this. I would have all kinds of clips here uh, in my clipboard. I could have the narration that I wanted to use for the clip. I could have small interview sound bites. I could add ambience uh, to the clipboard and music. I could basically add any audio I like. And having organized is a really good idea if you want to save some time and also being tidy. So what I've done now is I've actually deleted all the audio that was in the workspace. And you might be thinking, oh my God, you just deleted all the audio. But I haven't really, because it's all non-destructive. If I just take a little clip from here, delete the original, so to speak, audio, I can always find the entire interview within that little sound bite. I could just go from a single breath and I could still find the entire interview. So it's all non-destructive. You don't need to worry about a thing. Now, going back to where we were, I wanted to set this up as a typical news story. And it's got like this AB structure where I have some narration, and then I have a little sound bite. And again, it's setting the levels nicely for me. A little bit more narration and another sound bite. This is why we call them AB, because it's got track A, and now track B, but it's not really track, it's the person who's kind of A, B, A, B, A, B, and I've just, as before, just dragged them in there, let's see if it actually makes any sense, again it should peak nicely around minus nine. Simone and Kipsky have been creating crazy sounds together since they were kids in the city of Utrecht. My name is Simon, Simon Ackermans from Simon and Kipsky. That's Simon Ackermans, the Simone of Simon and Kipsky. That kind of evolved into, you know, more technology, our first. So that is pretty straightforward. And if I wanted to add some music or jingles to that, we'd just do as we did before, just add some music to it. Again, it will set the overall level, but if I want to adjust the overall level, there you go. Simone and Kipsky have been creating crazy sounds together since they were kids in the city of Utrecht. My name is Simon, Simon Ackermans. And then I just want to, that to fade out, so I just do a little fade out there. Again, so we didn't make in something that is going to sound very pleasing for your users at the end of the day is really easy to do. And especially knowing that all the levels are set for broadcast um, standards is really nice to know. Going from the broadcast radio standards to a podcast standard is easy peasy, but you know, now you know if you are doing something for a radio station as well, you've got all the levels set up correctly here. Moving on. 
swiftly, as it turns out. Let's try to look at something slightly more complex. So now we have the basics of telling a story, but now we want to expand it a little bit and play a little bit around with ambience and effects and so on and so forth. And this is typically something that we would love to do if you want to do a longer story, a more complex story. Not just because it sounds good, but because it does, but we want to engage our listeners. And if you want to engage them in a longer story, it's a good idea to help them along with adding uh, audio uh, to it, like music and uh, sound effects, to help tell that story. Fortunately, that is quite easy to do. You don't have a, need to have a degree in engineering to actually do this. I'm just going to play a little example here. You know how a beach town feels in the winter? That's what Clacton on Sea is like in the middle of summer. You know, they have the setups for ski ball and bumper cars and little booths for fried foods, but there's nobody there. You got to play the games by yourself. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. I don't really see any children anywhere. The main attraction seems to be sitting on benches and staring out to sea. You may have heard that there was this big age divide in the EU referendum. Young people in the UK voted to stay, older people voted to leave. And that in a nutshell explains the Clinton vote. I'm 72, Anna's 89. 89. When you get to a certain age, you're quite braggy about it, is it? <laughs> Joan Bowles and her friend Anna sit on a bench on a bluff looking out over the water. They're wearing so this is a story that could be told in actually all the other ways that we've just had a look at. But telling a story like what is Brexit all about and you want to make that engaging because it's a very complex story actually requires that you take out all the tools that you have in your uh, storytelling toolbox. And using sound that we heard here in the background with the with sea and the arcades and interviewing the old ladies in the street that is just some of the tools that you can use to make something more engaging okay so how do we go about doing that we're gonna again go back to what we were looking at before we still need the narration and the interview bits we would We've already seen how we can add music, but then we're going to look at how we can add, add ambience as well, and how we can start mixing up things. Another thing that is quite important is tidying up the sound, because you might have uh, audio recordings that don't sound their best. You could have been recorded it in a room where you have some AC or fans going on, or uh, you have some other problems, so you, you need to be able to tidy up the sound because if your listener is going to be listening to sound that doesn't sound very good, they're going to get sick and tired of you, to be honest, and they're going to switch over to something that sounds better. And at the end of the day, when we're finished with it, we want to be able to publish it. Okay, well maybe we should just continue with this one. So right now we've got four tracks, but we can actually add as many tracks as we like to this session. So just add as many tracks as you feel is necessary to do what you want to do. And in this case, let's try to see if we can maybe add... Uh, I don't know, let's have a listen. Yep, for this story we definitely need a harbour. So I'm just going to drag the ambience of a harbour. I could have recorded this uh, as I was in the field, but in this case I've just found it in some sound library. Typically ambient sounds don't need to be as uh, very loud, but you still need to have it loud enough at the beginning so you actually have an idea of what is going on. So now we kind of know that, oh, that sounds like a harbour. And then we can turn down the levels on that. Mm, was that the most interesting music we could find? Let's see if we can find some other music. No, horror music, that might be somewhat out of the realms of this. Uh, 
Okay, let's use that one again. I like that one. So again, I'm just playing around with it. I'm not too nervous uh, about deleting anything or losing anything. It's all right now. Just going to nudge that into place. Here we go. Again, select all this, move it over here. Simone and Kip. And I also want the music to duck right there. Creating crazy sounds together since they were kids in the city of Utrecht. My name is Simon, Simon Ackermans from Simon and Kipski. That's Simone Ackermans, the Simone of Simone and Kipski. That kind of evolved into, you know, more technology, our first four track. And now we can just start tweaking levels. Now, how do you actually mix something? Well, if you can hear what they're saying, that's the way it should sound. If you have difficulty hearing what anyone is saying, then whatever it is that you are mixing underneath is overpowering and you'll need to turn down the level slightly. There are no real rules for how you do this. So it is basically just using your ears. I'm just going to refer to what it was I'm talking about. Mixing, yes, tidying up the sound. So you kind of get the, uh, maybe I want to add a slam just because slams are fun. It's, uh, at the end of this, we can just add a slam to it for no apparent reason. One of the goals. <laughs> oh, we must have better slams than that. Let's try this one instead. Oh, then, then that's one of the goals. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I want to use. I'm just going to use that to uh, get out of the, the show. There you go. <laughs> Not necessarily what you would want to do with a new segment, but, you know, you could do it. Now, when it comes to tidying up the sound, there is usually two main problems. One is having a noisy recording. Now, fortunately, I have one right here. I'm not quite sure how this will go through when we play it here, but let's try it anyway. That kind of evolved into, you know, more technology. Or what we're listening for is in the background, there's this going on all the time uh, hopefully you, you can hear it at home that kind of evolved into you know more technology our first four track recorder like this so if we just wanted to get rid of that we've got a noise reduction tool in here in Hindenburg Journalist Pro I must say this Pro because it's not in the cheap and cheerful version so we're just going to add that and the way it works is you open this tool here Play back the sound. That kind of evolved into, you and know, more now, technology. Our first again, it's going to analyze it. Order, like this. And it's analyzed where the noise is. And all I need to do is just say, how much of the noise reduction do I want to apply? Tapes and then the first sampler. And we evolved that into kind of instrumental sample based. So maybe if I play it back without it, you can hear the difference. So this is without it. That kind of evolved into, you know, more technology, our first four track no, recorder, we're... like tapes, and then the first sampler, and we evolved it into kind of instrument. So there you go, within seconds, and very nicely, by the way, the noise is gone. The next thing that you want to be able to tidy up is the tone of your voice. Now, the tone of your voice is something that we typically use uh, EQs to do. And what it will actually do is just make you, well, if you, are, if you have a radio background, uh, you know people talking about getting you to pop out of the speakers, just making you sound crisp and nice and clear. And if your voice doesn't sound that already, let's uh, just solo this one up here. 
That Simone Ackermans, the Simone of Simone and Kipsky. We can actually change the, the tone of the voice. Ackerman says the band's music mixes the late beats popular with his childhood favorite, Public Enemy, with guitar, drums, keyboards, even sitar. And obviously you wouldn't want to do this, but you can do this. And you can fiddle around with this for the longest time and try to make something that sounds absolutely perfect in your headphones or on your speakers at home. Slight problem with that is you should really do it. And the reason for that is that you might create something that sounds great for yourself, but as soon as someone else is listening to it on their headphones or in their kitchen or in the car, it might actually sound quite different. It might be good, but also it might not. It really depends on the equipment. So how do you go about tackling that problem well what you do is you build a radio station and you build studios and a couple of hundred million later you've a great consistent sound if that is not an option in your garage and um, what you could also do is go to a radio station and have them help you out with do a recording of your own voice and then you can use that well, then obviously that would just require that you went down to the radio station every single time that you wanted to do a recording and that's not going to work anyway. But if you actually do it once, what we can do is mimic that experience. So I'm just going to find a session here. Here we go. So here, I, Clark has been down to the local radio station, a small little place called the BBC, and this is what he came home with. People have done it so far. The result... It's a frenetic mix of motion and stop action. Now, but when he does his recording in his kitchen, he sounds like this. So they launched a website called One Frame of Fame. Which is not terrible, but it's just not as good as this. The result is a frenetic mix of motion. So what we want to do is learn this profile. So what we could do here is go in and learn the profile. Now we could just save that. I've already done that, but you get the idea. So down here now, I have Clark's profile here. So I'm now going to apply this to the track with the bad sounding Clark. Now let's just remember what he sounds like. So they launched a website called One Frame of Fame. So this is what he sounded like before we just apply this profile. Now let's have a listen again with the profile on. On the site, you're presented with one frame from the video. You mimic the pose in the frame, take a shot with... So again, without it, your webcam, and then upload the picture. I'm with. More than 30,000 people have done it so far. So just by adding a single click, we now have Clark sounding the way that he wants to sound because we have actually something to compare to. So now we can have a consistent sound. And if there's anything that you want throughout a series of podcasts is a consistent sound and consistent levels. And all this is done basically out of the box. You don't really need to do much more than just click a single button. And you might ask yourself, well, could you not do this in other systems? Could you not just use any other software and get the same uh, result? Well, yes, you could, but it would just take you a very long time to do it if you're not very well trained. It's just a way of saving, and I'm not kidding, you will be saving probably not just hours, but at the end of the week, a day or so, just in these features here. If you're doing more, more than one, but if you're just doing one podcast, you'll probably be fine. Okay, so now we've got something that is interesting. Here is... Uh, when we've just added a few more tracks. And I've basically just done the same things that I've been doing all along. I've just been throwing a bit of sound in there, maybe adding a little fade. Um, and you know, there's, there's only a few things that you need to learn and you can actually start playing around with these things. And hopefully you got the, the idea of that already by now. So let's have a listen to this. I think that the Drake equation is truly an iconic equation, the question of extraterrestrial life. And one day my father told me that there are other worlds in space. And to me that was just fascinating, just to know what those other civilizations and their creatures and their ways of life and their technologies would be. 
One of the ideas in SETI is that Earthlings are sending off radio signals into space. What if ET has something like what Earth has and they're sending off signals intended for us? On the BBC World Sur- And off it goes. You could have done the exact same thing without all these bits and bobs of sound, but it would just not be that much fun. And at the end of the day, if you're having fun with it, probably your listeners having fun with it as well. Now, going from here, we're fin- finished with it. It sounds absolutely fantastic. And now I want to export the file. So I can press export here. And I can choose different file formats that I want to export it to. Um, maybe you just want to do an MP3. I can choose the quality, but let's go into options. And I can also choose something called loudness normalization. Now, this is what I was on about before when I was talking about how do you convert this to podcast levels. And um, I'm hoping that sometime during the day someone's talked about minus 16 LUFS. If not, we need to get back to that one at some point, but it's probably not going to be in the scope of this one. But at least minus 16 LUFS is the standard that is used for podcasting in most places. And then you might ask, well, what about all the other ones? Well, for instance, minus 24, that is used in America for broadcast radio. Minus 23 is used here in Europe. Uh, This is uh, defined by the EU. Minus 18, as far as I remember, that is the BBC online, just to make everything a little bit difficult. And minus 14 is, I heard someone talking about these uh, smart speakers. Um, before, and that is actually the levels that smart speakers are using. But minus 16, if you are doing a regular podcast, is just what you need. So all you need to do is choose minus 16, and when we now export this session, the overall level will be set to minus 16. That means that you can take that file, go to your host and say, will you please pay this? And they were going, sure, whatever, you paid for it. There's also a different approach to it. We have this publish tool up here. And the publish tool lets you set up multiple exports, as I've done here. Like I have my uh, podcast host, that might be Buzzsprout or Libsyn or what have you. And we can see here that this will actually go directly to that account I have with, for instance, Libsyn. And I can choose the file formats, the encoding type, the overall level. And I just need to set this up once. And I can just click that, say publish. It will take this session here, create a file at minus 16 and upload it. But I might also have a radio station that I want to FTP something up to. Could be this one. I want this to be a WAV file and going out at minus 23 because we're European and we know what we're talking about. And there you go. And uh, maybe one for the archive as well. So once all these targets are set up, all I actually need to do is just come in here, say, these are the ones that I want to do, and just have Hindenburg deal with the rest of it. And this might seem like a small trivial trivial thing, but if you've actually tried to spend Friday afternoon uploading to all your favorite destinations, you will soon realize that this takes time. I'm just going to cancel this, by the way. Before someone asks, how about ID3 tags? Yes, they're all here as well, and they will actually be uh, uploaded as you upload to your host or whoever you're uploading to. All right, that was just... No, go back one. Why is there not a back button in these things? Okay, so if there are any questions, uh, I'll be happy to take them now. So, yeah, thank you so much for your time and showing us how uh, Hindenburg uh, DAW works. Uh, we don't have any questions for what I've seen in the chat, but uh, maybe you want to share something with the audience that is uh, that is here uh, watching us. <laughs> Um, I thought you were going to do that, to be honest. Now, what we can share with you is if you are interested in trying this out, we do actually have a... And I send it to you. Well, I had someone send it to you. Was it a six-day trial? Uh, yes, uh, till the end remember. of the year. 
60-day yeah. trial of Hindenburg Journalist Pro, and a discount quote, uh, discount quote worth $75. I just put the link in the live chat. So mm -hmm. for those of you who are interested in, in the system. Yeah, and just before someone gets all disappointed and says, well, why am I not seeing all the features that he was talking about? There are actually two different versions. And there's the journalist version, which we'll get a discount on. We'll actually get a discount on Pro as well. But as you might see, there are some differences. Um, you are able to do a podcast using a journalist. It has the uh, automated levels. Uh, it has many of the same features, the clipboards and what have you, but some of the features that you later on find that you might need, like magic levels and multi-track recording, and for them, you'll need to go to the pro version. Thank you, you, Nick. Thank you, Thank you for the explanation. Uh, yeah, I yeah, shared the link in the, la in the live chat, so yeah, most likely you will receive... Uh, Sana request this week or next or the next week. Uh, yeah, Lizzie John said no questions. Thanks for the great tips. The software looks good. Lizzie John mm -hmm. uh, has been joining us uh, from Singapore. So hi, Lizzie from Singapore. And Nick, thank you so much for your time, for being here.